I think social expectations is more set just by the environment in my school and the behaviors of other people at my school and also my friends because sometimes if they want to do something then that's kind of an expectation for me to also be involved or else I'm like missing out. And academically I think it's mostly me and how I want to continue further education so if I want to get into a certain university I will have that expectation for myself to reach the average cutoff for that university so yeah I would say academic wise it's demanding like it's taking a toll on my mental health which also affects like how I perform like socially and in general I feel like it gets too demanding whenever I have too much stuff going on outside of school especially whenever my dad wants me to like hang out with him sometimes and I just like I'm overloaded with work my dad wants me to like hang out with him on the weekend and honestly I just like go upstairs I lock myself in my room and I just like try to study try to grind and at the same time he says like I'm just not socializing with, socializing with him enough if you're comfortable what's your current academic average it's, <laughs> it's gonna go down it's a 97 right now <laughs> are you satisfied with that like more or less that sounds so like that's the thing. I feel like it sounds so, like, conceited because I know it's still a good grade, right? But, like, the issue is that, like, last year, I got a 98, which I was, like, happy with. And, like, like obviously, like, I got highest average last year, right? But because I got a 98 last year, my, like, expectation is that I, like, should always be getting a 98. So, like, I got a 98 in grade 9. I got a 98 in grade 10. So like when I see like I got 97, I'm like, what am I doing wrong? You know, even though like, yeah, I know it's courses are harder. Yeah, I know like I'm going to like work more. And like, I know that like overall teachers are marking harder. Like, I don't know. Like I'm not upset with the 97, but I'm not like excited about it. Like, I'm not like happy. I, I will watch YouTube. I will spend, I will waste all my time on YouTube. I will do nothing else. Like, I, I cannot manage my time when I'm alone and I cannot um, keep, keep, keep control of my, uh, my own, own time management. I will just forget stuff, yeah. It's kind of hard to say. Um, I'd say I don't really have like any actual hobbies. Like for example, I do like extracurriculars. Like I play instruments and then uh, um, I also do some sports, but um, the purpose for like doing those extra characters is often like not that I truly like them. It's just I think they're good for like university applications. So that's why. So in terms of hobbies, I'd say I don't really have any like actual hobbies. Overthinking. I go through the whole day when I enter the school building. Who did I say hello to? And if I forgot to say hello what the other person thought about and then I talk with my friends and I say something that will make them think either I'm weird or just you know not normal and I just overthink until I fall asleep I think I don't really have any like role model or any person that I like look up to in a way where it's like oh I want to be like them I think uh, I've always strived to be like the best version of myself and like I think even relating back to spirituality and stuff like in Islam you're, you're like taught not to worship anybody but like I guess Allah or whatever so I think I try to stick away from like worshiping other people or their traits which are redeemable because I want to be the best version of myself not technically the best version of 
somebody else. I hope people, people feel comfortable when they're around me. Like I'm not judging them. Like I don't want people, people to feel awkward around me. I sort of went through this like phase in my life where I felt very awkward around people and other people went, felt very awkward around me, at least in like grade nine. And then I came to Appleby and I was like, I'm gonna change that shit. I'm gonna make friends. I'm gonna put myself out there. I'm not gonna be like that guy who sits in the corner. And I think it's just like, made a better impact on me. All my friends, we have such a trauma bond that it's very hard to break. I think they've seen, like, they know so much about me, but also they know nothing about me. I don't know, it's, it's hard. I would say I 100% love all of my friends, but sometimes there's, there's those moments, you know? But I don't really think, like, do you really need to like your friends? <laughs> I don't know. I think they bring some side, like sides of me that I couldn't discover myself alone. And and I like the version of myself and I'm around my friends, like certain friends, not all of them. I really have like a small inner circle. So yeah, like that's what I like. I think I had this really close friend in grade 10. and. Um, after she left, I think it was really tough for me because I felt like she was the first person in my life who actually understood me for who I was. And um, it's kind of surprising, but like it was her and a couple other friends, but it was mainly her. And I felt like after I lost her, like I felt like it was my step into adulthood that like uh, life wasn't as sweet anymore. I couldn't make stupid mistakes. And uh, I guess I'd had to learn to love myself after I lost her love. So, yeah. It's pretty daunting. I mean, I was like, I came this far and it ends like this now, you know, it's like, this is how it ends between you know, us as such good friends. And um, it was, it was, uh, it was just like, Jesus, like, I can't believe like, and I was so fond of this person too. And now I don't get to like see them anymore. I don't get to talk to them. Anymore. It was a long time ago, but uh, yeah. I like the uncertainty because it's like if you kind of knew what was going to happen, then it doesn't make life as exciting or like unpredictable. And that unpredictability is what makes life like worth living and very fun. So are we talking about dreams, anything I want to be in an investment bank in Wall Street and live in a nice New York apartment and just enjoy what I do because I really like working with finance. Is this how you envisioned it when you were younger? No. How did you envision it? I wanted to be a scientist. I wanted to actually, when I was around four, I think, invent a car that runs on water. But I was too young and they already figured it out a few years later that. So I was like, by the time I'm 30, no one's going to be inventing new things. So I stopped. You know, when I was young, I was like, oh, I want to be, uh, I want to be an astronaut one day. I want to be a nuclear physicist one day. I have no idea. I want to be a fighter jet pilot, you know, all these kind of things kind of restricted over, uh, uh, like over time periods. I learned more about the world I live in. So, you know, uh, it's definitely not what I envisioned when I was younger. I know I'm going to like do well. I know it'll be okay. One of my like major like like philosophies, quote unquote, in life is that like everything will work out. Like like as bad as it may seem right now, like it really doesn't matter. That's what I always tell myself. Like when I'm like getting like overly like focused on something, as like I tend to do. It's so, like for example, the two AM thoughts. Like it really doesn't matter. Like let's so, let's say I go to Harvard or let's say I go to like some random school in like Nevada or something. Like like I'll be okay. Like. I don't know, like at the end of the day, we're all just gonna like die and no one will anyways, so. Yeah, what was even the question? I can't remember the question. <laughs> are you happy? 
Um, Are you happy? Yeah. Yeah, I'm happy. I think happiness is literally just a chemical. You can have ups and downs. So really, every, people in life, they can feel happiness and they can feel sadness, but I don't think they can be happy or they can't just be sad all the time. Hmm. Um. <laughs>